Good morning, guys. It's really good to have you join me again today. My name is Mark, as many of you know, who tuned in in the past. Uh, I'm Mark and I'm the pastor of New Horizon Vineyards and I'm going to be delivering our church message uh, via YouTube today. So that for those who can't get to our service, you can tune in and catch it on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to start with a moment of prayer, if we may. Let's pray together. Father, I say thank you for my brothers and sisters, wherever they're tuning in from, Lord God. Uh, I th say thank you for your words. Thank you for this message that you've blessed me with and the opportunity to deliver it in this way. Uh, I pray, Lord, and ask you to use it to speak into our hearts, speak into our minds. Uh, but Lord, with your word, we pray that the power to complete it, to fulfill it, to apply it to our lives, that we may receive that power uh, and that we may uh, put all this stuff into practice for your praise and for your glory. Uh, Lord, we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Thanks, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. I I'm uh, just getting over a bit of a cold that I've had in this past week, so if my voice sounds a bit um, horsey. Uh, you know why I've had a bit of a cough and a cold, but I'm thankfully past the worst of it. Okay, so my message. Uh, some years ago, some years back now, uh, not that long ago actually, uh, there was a TV program. Um, it was actually um, created by a guy called Tim Kring. Uh, I hope I've pronounced that right. Uh, the program was called Heroes. Don't get confused with the David Bowie song Heroes, another great track from David Bowie. Uh, but some of you may remember the program Heroes. Uh, it's basically a program about, it's an American program about some superheroes, it's a superhero drama series, if you will. And it told the story uh, or the stories of a group of ordinary people who discovered that they had superhuman abilities. Sounds pretty cool, eh? Uh, collectively, these guys worked together to prevent a catastrophic future from occurring. For me, that's TV at its best. I love these kind of uh, completely fictional, crazy shows, but uh, I really like that kind of TV show. So what's all of this got to do with our exploration through 1 Peter? We've been working through a series on 1 Peter. What has it got to do with all of that, you may be wondering? Well, let's turn to today's verses and you'll find out. Let's read together, shall we? I'm going to be reading 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, verses 10 and 11. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 10 and 11. That's the verses we're going to study together today. Uh, I'd like to include verse 9 if, I'm, if I may because I believe that they all belong together. Uh, we looked at obviously verse 9 in my last message. Let me read them all together. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 9 through to 11 and it says, uh, be hospitable to one another without complaining. You remember that from my last message? Uh, love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah, sometimes we do things wrong, we say things wrong, uh, we upset each other in, in the fellowship, uh, but love covers a multitude of sins. So P uh, Peter says, be hospitable to one another without complaining. And he continues in verse 10, just as each one has received a gift, Use it to serve others as good stewards of the very grace of God. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Now those words at the end of verse 11 uh, they sound very much like a doxology and you'll find such doxologies uh, throughout the New Testament um, and some theologians actually think that uh, with Peter including a doxology here that that was actually the end of 1 Peter and that the remainder of what we have today uh, is, is a different letter altogether. Uh, I don't hold to that personally. Um, you'll find that uh, some, some New Testament writers use something of a doxology to end a particular subject that they've been covering or been speaking about uh, in their writings. So I see it more in line with that and that kind of fits in with um, yeah, 1 Peter being completed as it is with the remainder of chapter 4 and chapter 5. So, um, yeah, just a little bit of background information for you there. As I was studying in preparation today, I was reading all about that. Let me carry on with my message. As a church, as believers, we might not have superhuman abilities like those seen in the show Heroes. Uh, some of us wish we, we did have superhuman abilities, um, but the truth is we don't. 
Uh, but I can say that each and every one of us, that each and every one of us does have at least one supernatural spiritual gift. Every single one of us as followers of Jesus, born again, spirit filled believers, every single one of us have at least one supernatural spiritual gift. Gifts given to us by God through the Holy Spirit for the greater good. Amen. Today we're going to explore these spiritual gifts uh, with the Apostle Peter. Now his teaching on the subject is, is nowhere near as detailed as that of the Apostle Paul. Um, but I believe it's helpful for where we are today as this church, as New Horizon Vineyard. I believe what Peter is speaking today is helpful for where we're at as, as New Horizon Vineyard. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is getting a little bit horsey. Um, I included verse 9 of our reading today because I believe that Peter is speaking, uh, speaking into the context of these, these gifts, these spiritual gifts being used within the fellowship of the church. Now we know some of the spiritual gifts, like the gift of evangelism and so on and so forth, uh, they're more of an outward kind of uh, gift that's used outside of the church more than within the church. But I think that what Peter is speaking about here, particularly in line with what we've already looked at in, in other verses in 1 Peter, uh, chapter 4 particularly, uh, I think Peter is speaking into the context of these spiritual gifts being used within the fellowship of the church. He says in verse 10, uh, that we are to minister to one another as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. You know, the word translated as gift, charisma, uh, speaks of a very special kind of gift. Uh, it comes from the root word charis, uh, which means grace. The word charis means grace. And, and so Peter is writing about grace gifts. He's writing about grace gifts or spiritual gifts as we understand them. Uh, spiritual gifts, grace gifts that have been given to us by our God, by our Lord. The term grace gift gives the whole idea of these spiritual gifts uh, a deeper meaning for me. Um, you know, when I think of God's grace, I think of him pouring out his love and his grace upon my life each and every day. Uh, whether I deserve it or not, our God chooses to pour out his love and grace upon us. And when I think of grace gifts, it's our response, isn't it? It's our opportunity to pour out that kind of love upon each other, whether it's deserved or not, whether, whether one of our brothers or sisters have upset us. As we looked at in my last message, love covers a multitude of sins, uh, be hospitable to each other. Uh, grace means that we choose to pour out this love. Um, use our gifts to, to serve each other regardless of whether we're in a good place with each other or not. We choose to love on each other. We can impact each other's lives with the very grace of our God. Let me move on. You know, when we think about spiritual gifts, there's a lot of teaching actually on the subject. And, and there's four major passages in the New Testament that teach us about spiritual gifts, about these grace gifts. You'll find teaching in Romans chapter 12. Uh, this is all by the Apostle Paul. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through of, um, chapter 14. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And then obviously in today's passage by 1 Peter, uh, by Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, you also see mention of, of spiritual gifts in the Timothy letters. Uh, but most of the teaching is done by the Apostle Paul in those first three uh, uh, references, Romans, Corinthians and Ephesians. Now we're going to concentrate today uh, on the two categories that the, the Apostle Peter highlights, that being speaking God's word, uh, declaring the oracles of God, uh, and then secondly on serving, serving one another. Uh, I might add at this point, actually, that, that many today would um, add a third category to the subject of gifts uh, and they would call it the miraculous gifts. You know, things like the gift of healing. Some people are, are blessed with the gift of being able to pray for someone's healing. And see, we all pray for healing, but some people have a, actually a spiritual gift of healing. Um, the, the, the miraculous gift that is prophecy and, and things like that, uh, things that are a little bit outside of the normal, if you will, uh, clearly miraculous works of God. Uh, um, so some people would separate the gifts into a third category. Uh, and I actually watched some really good teaching on it in the week uh, in preparation for today, a roundtable discussion from some pastors. 
I found it on YouTube. It's about 30 minutes long. I'm going to post the link uh, in the description or in the notes below the, uh, the, this video clip uh, so you can watch it for yourself. And it talks about these grace gifts, um, how you know, some people believe that uh, much of these gifts ended when the Bible was complete, when we had the infallible word of God. And how some people believe in the continuance of these gifts. I fall into that final category. I believe in the continuance of these gifts. That uh, God is still moving in such ways through spiritual gifts in his church today. But I'd encourage you to watch it if you're interested in going a bit deeper uh, and finding out more information on these spiritual gifts. But today we're going to concentrate on those two categories that the Apostle Peter highlights. That's of speaking God's word and that of serving but before we look at them in any detail, uh, uh, to help us understand um, yeah, the whole spiritual gift thing, uh, I want to share a bit of a list of, of what those spiritual gifts are uh, from the New Testament. It's not an exhaustive list, um, but it is quite a helpful list. Uh, so I'm just going to read them out to you uh, and just listen. Maybe one or two of these gifts really resonate with you. That will give you a clue as to what spiritual gifts you've been given. Uh, so they include, it's quite a few, so let me just read them read them for you. The first one is the spiritual gift of administration. Uh, they're not put in order of importance. I think they're put in alphabetical order. So uh, just receive them that way. Um, spiritual gift of administration, spiritual gift of apostleship, discernment, evangelism, exhortation, faith, uh, the spiritual gift of giving, healing, uh, helps, hospitality, knowledge, leadership, mercy, prophecy, serving, speaking in tongues, teaching, sometimes known as shepherding, and last on the list, wisdom. As I say, it's not an exhausted list. Um, you know, you'll probably be able to add to that list, but I think it is quite comprehensive. Uh, and yeah, maybe pause and go over that again so you can hear it again. And maybe something resonated with you. What spiritual gift, grace gift, have you been given by our gods? And how can you use those gifts to lovingly serve others in the faith? What gifts has God given you as a born again, spirit filled believer? How can you use those gifts to lovingly serve others in your fellowship? Keep these questions in mind. Um, we're going to pray into them a little bit later, speak into them a little bit more and pray into them a little bit later. Back to our verses today. I want to cover verse 10 again, but I want to read it from the Passion Translation. Uh, it's good to explore different translations. Eh? I, I generally work from the Christian Standard Bible, uh, but it's always good to look at other translations. It helps you get a, a greater understanding as to what you're reading. So I, I want to share verse 10 from the, the Passage Translation. It reads this way. Every believer has received grace gifts. Every believer. Not just the pastor or you know, the, the Sunday school teacher, but every, part, every believer has received grace grace gifts so peter says so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many colored tapestry of god's grace what a beautiful picture that is eh? the many colored tapestry of god's grace you know sometimes when we look at spiritual gifts we kind of uh yeah we, we, we look maybe the fashionable gifts and the not so fashionable gifts and what we feel is maybe more of an important gift than, than some of the others um, but actually they're all important eh? Uh, whether you've got the gift of healing, the gift of helps, the gift of administration, hospitality, wisdom, whatever, they are all so, so important. And collectively, when we bring them all together, uh, they give us the, the, the many colored tapestry that is God's grace. There is no um, hierarchy, if you will, when it comes to spiritual gifts. Collectively, when we use our gifts together, uh, we, we show the many colored tapestry that is God's grace. Amen. I want to say how exciting it is to be a part of a church that seeks to make full use of the spiritual gifts that God provides. How exciting it is to be a part of a church that actively seeks to fully use the spiritual gifts that God has provided. Imagine this, if you will. Imagine a huge fellowship of people, huge fellowship of people with various grace gifts from God actively ministering one to another they say in vineyard circles everyone gets to play imagine everyone getting to play everyone getting to use the spiritual gifts that god has blessed them with to serve one another one another in the church 
You know, that's the kind of church I believe that God desires for us to be, for New Horizon Vineyard. And anyone tuning in from outside of New Horizon Vineyard, you know, I believe that that's what God wants his church to look like today. It's the kind of church that uh, actively glorifies God and points people to Jesus. As we, as we use our grace gifts to love on each other, it actively glorifies God and points other people to Jesus. That's the kind of church that I believe our God is looking for today. You know, the Apostle Peter, in our two verses, only two verses today, but our, uh, the Apostle Peter gives a, a very brief but practical picture as to what putting all this stuff into practice should look like. So let me uh, turn your attention to verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, and going back to the Christian Standard Bible. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. We are to speak God's words. That, um, we are to let the words that we speak to each other, be they prophetic words or words of wisdom, words of counsel, be they words of encouragement, whatever. We are to share what God has given us, the word that God has given us, as if we're speaking God's word himself. We are to share the word that he directs us to share. I love the fact that our God still actively speaks uh, to his people today, that our God is still actively speaking uh, in and through his people today, in and through the church. I know that the first place we would turn to is the word of God, obviously the infallible word of God. But I believe that God speaks beyond that as well uh, through through words of wisdom, through uh, words of knowledge, through prophetic um, dreams and, and words and so on and so forth. And I love the fact that God speaks into my life in such ways. Moving on, when we get the opportunity to serve each other in the church with the grace gifts that God has given us, we should do so in the strength that God provides. That is so, so important to take on board, guys. Yeah, when we use these spiritual gifts, we don't do it in and of ourselves. It's not about us. It's about our God. And so we use these gifts in the strength that God provides. With such thoughts in mind, um, let me ask this question. Can you see the difference between spiritual gifts, gifts of grace, uh, the difference between them and natural abilities, natural talents? Can you see the difference? You know, we all have natural abilities, natural talents, things that we can just easily turn our hand to. Some of you are really good at, uh, at DIY and stuff like that. Just It's just second nature to you, you know. Uh, we all have these natural abilities, natural talents, and we don't depend on anyone for them. It's just something in and of ourselves that we can do. But with spiritual gifts, with grace gifts from God, we are totally dependent on God. See the difference? We are totally dependent on God. We depend on him for his provision. We depend on him for his direction. And we depend on him to empower us uh, to use those gifts. There's such an important distinction to take on board there. And it's a really encouraging one if you, if you hear it. Uh, this call to serve one another. And we're all called. We all get to play. We're all called to serve one another. Uh, this call to serve one another through using those spiritual gifts that we've been given, it's not dependent upon me. It doesn't depend on me. It's not something that I conjure up in and of myself. It's not dependent on me. We operate with total dependence on God. Amen? We operate with total dependence on God. It doesn't depend on how, how long I've been a Christian. Uh, you can move in his spiritual gifts from day one when you're born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't depend on how long you've been saved. It doesn't depend on how many times you've completed the Bible in a year, how familiar you are with scripture. It doesn't depend on whether you are male or female, young or old. We are totally dependent on God as to um, when and how we can use these spiritual gifts of grace that he gives us. That there, I truly believe, that, that, that one statement there, I believe, is going to set someone free today. Set them free to maybe move, maybe for the first time, in the gifting that God has given them. It's not dependent on you. 
It's dependent on what God is doing in and through you. Be released to use the spiritual gifts that God has given you. Amen. <clears throat> okay, let me move on. How do we receive these spiritual gifts? How do we receive these spiritual gifts? Well, there's, I believe, two obvious prerequisites for receiving spiritual gifts. First one is the obvious one. We need to be born again believers. It's for God's church. It's for God's people. So we need to be born again believers, people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is not for the people of the world. Maybe we can use them to love and serve the people of the world. But uh, it is God's people who receive these grace gifts from heaven. Uh, so we need to be a born again believer, someone who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Secondly, uh, we need to be open to doing the work of Jesus, continuing the work of Jesus, continuing the work, the ministry of serving, uh, getting involved in things. Uh, we need to be open or actively uh, doing the work of Jesus. You know, we're not going to receive spiritual gifts if we live, dare I say, as Christian couch potatoes. Uh, we're not going to get the spiritual gifts just to sit on the on, on, on the sofa uh, and watch the action rather than getting involved. We're not going to receive spiritual gifts if we're just intent on being Christian couch potatoes. We receive these gifts of grace so that we can minister one to another as we step out in faith and get involved in the work of Jesus in our world today. Amen. Okay. Uh, I need to start wrapping this message up um, and, and I want to I want to bring this message home to us as as a church today to us as New Horizon Vineyard uh, I don't believe any any of our members of our church are members by chance I think each and every one uh, every person that is part of New Horizon uh, I believe that God has planted you into this church on purpose you're not here by chance uh, God has a plan, a very special role, a plan and purpose for each and every one of us to play. Uh, he wants to bring us into a place where every single one of us gets to use the spiritual gifts he's given us. And none of you are here by chance. You've all been called on purpose for a purpose. But let me just add something to that. Um, because, you know, listening to a message like this, it can... It can feel a little bit overwhelming, like, oh, my word, I've got to get involved in something. I've got to be doing something in the church, you know, uh, and it can feel a bit like there's a bit of pressure being put on you to get involved in ministry. And, and we want everyone to have an opportunity to use their gifts and be on board and, and be a part of God's moving forward uh, with, with the advancement of the church, obviously. But, uh, you know, maybe you're in a season at this time where actually you're in that place where you need to receive more than give. Yeah, maybe you're going through some stuff in life, some hardships in life. And actually, when you come to church, you just want to be, you just want to receive. Yeah, you don't want to be a part of giving. You're just not in that place at this time. Maybe it's just too hard at this time. And you're in a place where you would rather just spend time receiving than um, taking the opportunities to give. Yeah, we all have seasons like that. I certainly have. There's times when, even now, uh, leading a church, there's times when I just, I can't do it. You know, and, and I'm grateful for people like Louise who will step in um, when I just need to just be a part of the fellowship for a day. Uh, you know, we all go through seasons like that. So, but I want to say to you, if you are in a season like that at this time in your life, uh, view it as a season that you're passing through. Don't view it as your final destination. However long you need to be in that season, see it as a season that you're passing through rather than your final destination. Because there's nothing more exciting in life than to be at the centre of God's will for your life and using everything that he's provided you with uh, to fulfil his plan and purpose for your life. So if you're in a season where you just need to receive rather than give, see it as a season that you're passing through rather than being your final destination. Amen. Amen. You know, for this church, for our church, New Horizon Vineyard, I believe that God will provide everything that we need to do the work as his church, do the work that he has given us as his church. I, I believe he will provide everything that we need at this time, or as we need it, as we step into the things that he has for us. And so as a church, what is the mandate that God has given us for where we're at today? Well, I believe that God wants us to continue to seek to reach out to the lost and hurting, to come alongside those 
who are lost to point them to Jesus, those who are hurting, maybe those who are going through addiction and you know want to come into recovery. I believe that God wants us to continue to reach out to such people. I believe he wants us to disciple believers, uh, particularly after this pandemic has shown us the importance of people being equipped to live out their faith, even if you can't meet for church. So I believe that discipleship is so, so important that God is calling us to disciple believers. Uh, we are to do our bit to try and turn poverty around. You know, we're not a, a church with abundance in, in, in finances or anything like that, that we can necessarily give out handfuls of, of money. Um, but we can encourage people to uh, get back into work and, and maybe run their own businesses. And we want to be the kind of church that motivates that in people's lives. I believe God has, has called us to that. You know, this, this list is going to grow. Uh, we're, we're quite a small fellowship at this time, but as the church grows, uh, the purpose and the plans that God has for us, he's going to reveal more of that and our list will grow. But for now, for where we are today, what does God's provision for the fulfillment of the vision that he's given us? What does God's provision look like for us today? What does that provision look like for us today? And this is where I invite each and every one of you to play as they say in vineyard circles everyone gets to play you are part of God's provision for our church today so what does God's provision look like for us to fulfill his vision for, for our church it looks like you and it looks like me it looks like every single one of us get an opportunity to use the spiritual gifts that we've been given so let me ask you again what gifts what what grace gifts what spiritual gifts has God given you how can you use them to lovingly serve others in the faith as, as God seeks to grow this church, our church, New Horizon Vineyard? What gifts has God given you? Are you someone with the gift of hospitality? Maybe you want to host a discipleship group uh, so we can, we can teach people the Bible. Maybe you want to lead a, a discipleship group. Maybe God has gifted you in a way to lead a discipleship group. Are you someone who, uh, you know, you're really good at talking to people and yeah, maybe you've got a, a bit of an evangelistic gifting uh, and you're going to be the kind of person that invites others to our church, brings other people into the church. Are you gifted to pray for the sick? Uh, one of those miraculous gifts. Are you practical with your hands? You know, some of us, you know, we, we, we don't really feel that we're teachers or evangelists or prophets, uh, but we're pretty good with our hands, you know. Yeah, I think of people like Jacques, you know, when we have our brides, I can always rely on him to do the background stuff to get the bride going and all that kind of stuff. Are you practical with your hands? Has God gifted you with the, the spiritual gift of helps? How can you get on board with that side of, of the church? Uh, are you gifted as an administrator? Are you good with finances? Are you musically minded? Um, have you been given the spiritual gift of, of being a teacher? a good communicator of God's word, and so on and so on and so forth. What spiritual gift has God given you? A spiritual gift that you can use as our church seeks to move forward into everything God wants it to be. What spiritual gift has God given you? You know, so far today, we've, we've thought about uh, a little bit about what spiritual gifts are. Uh, I've even invited you to start using those spiritual gifts. But how, how do we identify which spiritual gifts or what spiritual gifts God has given each of us? How do we identify what spiritual gifts we've been given? <clears throat> I want to suggest a few ideas to help you uh, in this exciting voyage of discovery, so to speak. Uh, earlier, I shared a list of, of spiritual gifts. Uh, and I asked you, does anything particular stand out for you? Uh, did any particular spiritual gifts uh, as listed there, did they resonate with you? That might give you some indication as to, to the gifts that God has already given you. Uh, another way to identify your spiritual gift or gifts is to talk to other Christians, other Christian friends. Um, what gifts can they identify in you? You know, when I first um, started being called into the ministry as a pastor, I couldn't see it in and of myself. But uh, every leader I sat under, and I sat under many leaders uh, as a Christian, they all would say to me, Mark, you, God is separating you to go into the ministry as a pastor. Uh, they could see in me something that I couldn't necessarily see in myself. Uh, so talk to other Christians. Maybe they can see in you something that uh, you can't naturally see for yourself. 
Another way is obviously to pray about this stuff. Uh, pray and ask God to show you the gifts uh, and to open up opportunities for you to use them. Ask God whatever gift, what is the gifts he has given you and how, where and when can I use those gifts? You know, God wants to make this stuff clear to us. It's in his interest to make all this stuff clear to us. He wants to see his church equipped and, and moving forward. So it's in his interest to make all of this stuff clear to us. Next, you can consider taking one of those online spiritual gift tests. Uh, I know Saddleback and um, do a, a, a shape course, uh, um, an online free online resource where you can uh, do the questionnaire and it can give you some idea of what spiritual gift or gifts you've been given. I do find some of these tests to be a little bit impersonal. Uh, obviously, it's a computer algorithm, um, so they are a little bit impersonal, but uh, they're, they're worth doing. Um, but take the results with a pinch of salt and, and maybe um, spend some time in praying over the results and, and talking to other Christians about what, what the results are and how you can um, uh, move forward with, with what you've been shown through taking those tests. Let me finish by just saying this, actually. God always, and I've said this before, but uh, God, God gives us spiritual gifts. He gives us these gifts to help us grow as believers, but also to benefit his church in our day. So he really wants us. He really wants you to discover what your gift is so, and show you how to best use it uh, in, in, the, in your fellowship. Uh, it's in his best interest to, to make this stuff clear to us. Amen. OK, I hope you found this uh, rather quick whistle stop teaching on spiritual gifts helpful. Uh, obviously, much more can be taught on the subject. And, and, and yeah, I do refer you to that video clip that I spoke of earlier. You can find it on YouTube. I will post a link to it. Um, there's much more that can be taught on it. But I hope you found this message helpful. Um, but I do believe that's enough for us today. Um, I'm going to wrap this message up now by just looking at those closing words that the Apostle Peter uses in verse 11. I think it's a great way to wrap up the message. I'll read the whole verse, but I'm highlighting uh, those final words. Uh, verse 11. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Guys, you know, all of what we've considered today goes far beyond the needs of any church, goes far beyond the needs of our church, goes far beyond the needs of us as growing believers. It's all about the call upon our lives to glorify our gods. That's what it's all about, guys. We are called as followers of Jesus to glorify our gods. Because of Jesus, we can experience life. We can experience love. We can experience grace. We can experience what authentic community is as we step out in faith and use the spiritual gifts that we've been given. In and through Jesus, we can truly do life together in a way that glorifies our gods. As we discover and use our spiritual gifts, the gifts that God has given us, we can all become a part, a beautiful part, of God's amazing tapestry of grace. What part will you play in that tapestry of grace? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, I say thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord God, that uh, Lord, not only have you saved us, not only have you forgiven us, but Lord, you've also equipped us. You've given us these spiritual gifts as, as born again, spirit filled believers. Each and every one of us, Lord God, has at least one spiritual gift from heaven. It's a gift that you give us. It's an opportunity that you give us to love and serve those around us, our brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's a gift that you give us that will enable us to point other people to Jesus, Lord God. And sometimes, Lord God, when we think about this stuff, it can be a little bit, you know, cause us to feel a little bit uh, nervous, Lord God, about stepping out in faith and, and, uh, and using this stuff, Lord God, using these gifts, Lord God. But Lord, thank you that you've reminded us today that it is, yeah, you, it's not dependent on us to use these gifts. It's de our dependence is upon you, Lord God. It's not dependent on us to get it right. Our dependence is upon you, Lord God. We don't, 
exercise these spiritual gifts in and through our own strength, Lord God. We do say through your strength, through your provision, through your direction. Uh, so take the fear away, Lord God, and encourage each and every one of us to identify our gifts, identify where, how, and when you want to use those gifts. You encourage us to use those gifts. And Lord, yeah, let us experience the joy of seeing our efforts, Lord God, make a difference in other people's lives. Let us experience the joy of being at the centre of your will and using everything you've given us uh, to be a part of a growing church, to be a part of a church that seeks to glorify you and point people to Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the gift that is the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you for the gifts that he has released within us so that we can minister, uh, so that we can all get to play, all for your praise and for your glory. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Lord, bless them and keep them. And uh, yeah, Lord, uh, open up the doors. Give us opportunities to, to use all of this stuff, apply all this stuff to our lives, all for your praise and your glory. In Jesus' name, thanks, Lord. Amen. Amen. Guys, it's so good to have you join me again today. My sermon's a little bit longer today, about five minutes longer than normal. Uh, but I thank you for, for, for tuning in. Uh, I will post um, a link to that little video I spoke about. Uh, it's well worth watching. Uh, and I'll, I'll see if I can find a link to the um, Saddleback site where you can do that spiritual gift test for free. Um, I did have the link somewhere, but I'll, I'll find it and I'll post it. Uh, with this video online so you can do both of them and I really hope um, that you discover what your spiritual gift is uh, I'm always available to talk to you uh, we can talk via social media you know what's that messenger all that kind of stuff uh, or we can meet face to face if you want to talk about spiritual gifts and how you can best use them so uh, I make myself fully available to you for that uh, be blessed guys and I look forward to speaking to you again soon thanks for tuning in